Emma has a great personality. She's vivacious, she loves to be silly, loves to um, entertain people. She is um, very polite and very inquisitive, loves to learn and is involved in learning a lot of different things. She likes the environment, she likes like coloring, she can't wait to learn how to read. So it's, it's a lot of fun because of her excitement in different avenues. My name is Joan Belling. My daughter and I have had a strange relationship ever since she's been a teenager. She has been diagnosed as bipolar and oppositional defiant behavior. So things were, have been a struggle for a long time. They became much worse when um, she started using drugs. And then you know, it just compounded things and she stopped taking her medication and um, things just got worse parent because of drug abuse or mental health issues simply cannot meet the, the needs of the child, then that parent would have very restrictive visitation. Um, things didn't really change a whole lot because they were rocky to begin with, but um, I questioned how she was raising Emma. I felt a little uncertain, so that put a little more tension into the situation. When Emma was first born, she lived with me, her mom and Emma lived with me for about four months, and I had closer supervision, and actually I was the primary caregiver at that time. I went to pick up Emma one time for a doctor's appointment. I got there and Emma was still in bed. I went to take Emma to the doctor and Kate said, why well, aren't you going to feed her? And I, it was 1.30 in the afternoon, and I, I couldn't believe it. She, she had not fed Emma for the entire day. So th at that point in time, I knew I had to do something. When um, children are referred to, um, when DCF is involved, they like to place them not into foster care, but rather with their, uh, uh, other family members. So oftentimes, they'll be placed with grandparents. So the process becomes a legal one. Um, Unless, of course, there can be some type of amicable conversation and recognizing that if you go to court, this can cost a significant amount of money. And is there a way that we can do this with some type of a mediation before we go to court? In a grandparent coming into a custody case, the grandparent has a pretty heavy burden um, and ultimately would have to prove that it would be detrimental to the child to be in the custody of the parent. I went to probate court and spoke with um, Judge Blick's um, clerk, and I had all kinds of paperwork to fill out. Um, I wrote down as explicitly as I could the incidences that caused me concern. Uh, the judge read what I had written, and without personally seeing me, she decided that it was a situation that needed attention immediately, so she granted me immediate temporary custody. can seek visitation, which is not the same as custody, and uh, a grandparent can intervene in a custody matter. That is, once there's a custody matter dispute between two parents, the grandparent can ask to be a part of that and could get awarded custody in that circumstance. During this time, I thought Emma's father should be responsible and pay child support. So they did the DNA testing and he was deemed her father. And that is really what created problems because then he decided he wanted full custody of Emma. In terms of fitness, it's not, uh, we're always looking at which parent. So in our court, it's trying to weigh which parent or which proposed custodian can best address the needs of the child. So um, 
we continued in court, in probate court. The judge determined after seeing everything that Emma would be with me. And the day that we went to have this finalized, Raul's attorney said, I want to take this to Superior Court. And Superior Court reigns over probate court. So probate court had to turn it over to Superior Court. The whole process started all over again. They had to do all the investigations all over. They had to interview people. Everything began like it was day one. And it was like about two and a half years of back and forth and struggling and not knowing what was going to happen before it was finally granted that Emma's father and I would have joint um, legal custody but placement with me. The Grandparents Visitation Act was a piece of legislation that was done a few years back and it came about with the request from grandparents in the state of Connecticut and specifically in the northwest corner that were looking to have a relationship or a visitation type relationship with their grandchildren of which the biological parents were prohibiting that relationship to to be taking place. It's such a rewarding experience to see firsthand a piece of legislation that you've been able to be a part of and co-sponsor and recognize that it's actually changed the lives of children and given them maybe a better opportunity or a better lifestyle than they were, would have been able to had without this piece of legislation. It's difficult taking care of a four-year-old because I don't have the stamina that a 30-year-old parent would have. I tire more easily than they do. But I think I also have maybe more patience than like a real young parent would have. And um, I, I guess I, I've learned through having children of my own that you don't sweat the small things and you know, you can just let certain things slide, which I think especially first-time parents have trouble doing. It's the best interests of the child. That's what we look at.